Welcome back to another episode of The Art of Bird Photography. First, I want to thank my subscribers because I recently passed the 2,500 subscriber mark. Oh my goodness, that's one fourth of the way to 10,000. Thank you everybody for watching my videos and leaving comments. I really appreciate it. I couldn't have done all of this stuff without my subscribers. Okay, in this episode, I'm going to be working on this common gallinule. This is a photo I'm currently working on. And there are a few things that I want to talk about with regard to this photo. The first is eyes. It's so important to pay attention to the eyes. Now, a lot of times the most common edit people do to eyes is brightening catch lights. But actually, have you ever heard of darkening pupils? Now, sometimes if you edit a bird shot and you go to the pupil, you'll see that while the catch light is bright, I didn't actually edit this catch light. But the pupil sometimes is a little bit gray not exactly black. Now, in this case, the pupil is fairly close to black, but I did add an extra tone curve here to make it just a little bit more black. And the reason why I do that is because from a distance, if the picture is displayed at normal size on a large monitor, then the gray pupil can appear a little bit washed out. So if the pupil is a little bit too gray, it's a good idea to add a little bit of darkening to it to get a little bit more of that shiny look in the eye. The eye will look more shiny if you have a darker pupil, a bright catch light. So just a small mask. See what I do is I zoom very close into the eye and I apply a tone curve with a mask just on the pupil. And that allows me to darken that pupil just a little bit to give a little bit more of that dark appearance, which looks a little better when the bird is shown at the normal size. Another thing, See, I notice on the right hand side there, there's this small wavy line. It's a little bright for my tastes here. You see there's this bright small line and it's a little bit distracting. And, and with background elements like this or incidental elements that aren't the main subject, there's so many different ways. Oh my goodness, there's so many different ways that you can deal with them. Uh, one possibility is using the tone curve with a mask to darken that area just a little bit so it's not so bright. I think this scene is quite peaceful and that line sort of detracts away from that piece. And you know, this goes to a, a philosophy of mine. There are always two types of edits that you can do. The first type of edit is the obvious edit. It's the kind of edit where you know you have to make the edit right away, like sharpening the bird or making a proper exposure or something like that. The second type of edit is a kind of edit that you don't know you need to make. That's not immediately obvious, but when you do make it, it's obvious that it should have been done, or it makes such a big difference. It's sort of like when you're really concentrated on something and you don't know that you're thirsty. And then when you take a sip of water, it's so refreshing. And you were thirsty all along, but you didn't know it. This is one of those cases, see? So what I did was I added a tone curve. Watch that line there. I added a tone curve and that just darkened, darkened that line. So now you can't see that line as much. See, it's a little bit darkened. And maybe I went a little bit too far there. Maybe I won't go so far. Actually, that's another tip. Instead of, I see I dragged this tone curve back up. Instead of actually dragging the tone curve back up, you can also decrease its opacity a little bit. It's much easier. It's like a custom slider here. First create the effect and then use the slider. Now it's looking too bright. And now it looks kind of natural. Another thing I want to do, and, and I noticed this right away, it's not just the wake, that line that bothered me, but it's also this sort of, at the very edge you have some contrasty areas here. And those contrasty areas kind of are more contrasty than the rest of the photo, except the bird. Look at the rest of the water. You got very smooth water in the bottom, relatively smooth water in the back of the bird, the wake of the bird, smooth background here. But this area is a little contrasty. So what I did was I actually applied another contrast equalizer and I decreased the contrast just in that area. You'll see, I'll turn it on, watch that area carefully. Ah, see? Look at the off, on, off, on. And I just applied a little bit of a mask there just to decrease the contrast in the right edge. And you can't really notice the effect except in that tiny area. It gives a more of a smooth fall off to the effect. Whereas if it's off, you have so much roughness in that area. And it just kind of doesn't seem consistent with the theme or the feeling of the rest of the photo. So by decreasing that contrast in that area, Ah, I just feel a sudden influx of peace there. And there's so many different ways to manipulate a background or manipulate the less noticeable parts of your photo. You could use tone curves to decrease the luminosity. You could use 
a contrast equalizer to decrease the contrast. You could use color tools to change the color or decrease saturation. There's so many different ways you can do it. And you have to experiment and use the best way for your photo in question. It's not a cut and dried method. It's a different method every time. Here I used a little bit of tone curve and a little bit of contrast equalizer. But in another case, I might have used a different tool, perhaps like the blur tool, if there was too much contrast in a certain area, especially in the corners of the photo. So that's all I have for the art of bird photography. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. I hope all these tips help you improve your bird photography, and I'll see you again next time.